So we're not going to play the whole clip, but you can actually go and watch the um, um, interview, a whole video, if you haven't already. I'm sure you probably have. It's over on Fight Hype, where basically I pretty much knew, and that's why I didn't feed into any of the bullshit when it comes to Tiafimo Lopez and who he was fighting next. It's been long, or the writing has been long on the wall that he was going to be fighting his IBF mandatory, none other than George Cambosos Jr., who resides in, do you know where he resides? I know he's from Australia, but where does he reside? Is he in Florida or is he in New York? Big yeah, Jeff. He lives in Sydney, man. No, but he's been over here training mostly in like Vegas, right? Yeah, I believe he trains in Vegas, uh, but he actually, uh, I believe he lives in Sydney. Well, anyway, here's what, you know, just to give you some clarity. And boxing fans, if you know how the IBF rolls, you pretty much knew this was what was going to happen. So, listen in, just a few few seconds. You already know. Um, my mandatory, that will be my next fight, George Cambosis Jr. Um, reason why also because the IBF is very strict. No matter how much they love me, no matter how much of a great champion I am for them, um... If I don't fight my mandatory, I have to give up my IBF lightweight world title. Obviously, I am not going to do that. I work. So all boxing, you know, the hardcores, they know. But I, I guess, you know, we can have some, you know, um, um, closure now to know that it's not going to be Ryan Garcia. It's not going to be Tank Davis. It's not going to be Devin Haney, even though I feel it should have been Devin Haney. But the IBF, they're strict. Now, the problem is... Or I guess in this case, what we're going to talk about is how does George Cambosos beat or if he can defeat from what we know at 19 and 0 with 10 KOs, does he defeat 16 and 0 with 12 KOs, Tiafimo Lopez? Now I'm going to say right now, I was one of those people, just like we did in our previous video talking about uh, Tim Zhu, Dennis Hogan. And if Tim Zhu defeats Dennis Hogan, then it's like, all right, now I can start believing in you. For me, with Tiafimo Lopez, I didn't like the way the Nakatani went down. And then I was like, all right, if he beats Richard Comey, then that's his stepping stone. I didn't have him beating Loma, but I didn't say, like, motherfuckers were saying, like, oh, he's going to get schooled and all. I wasn't on that type of shit. But however, when it comes to George Cambosos, his win over Lee Selby doesn't have me thinking he can defeat a Tiafimo Lopez. Your thoughts? Um, your thoughts on the fight overall, though? How do you feel about it getting made or the fact that at least we know that it's next and that, unfortunately, that it's probably not going to be in Australia, Big J? Well, first and foremost, I mean, hats off to Tiafimo Lopez for actually, you know, fighting his mandatories and not doing this docking and do ducking and dodging bullshit that boxers are known for. So good on him. At least he, he's got the, you know, the, the gumption to give young Georgia an opportunity at his belt. So mm. good on him. He's, he's fighting his mandatories, and you've got to respect that. Um, does George have a chance? Of course he's in the bloody ring. You know, it, boxing can, you know, one punch changes everything. Does he have a, you know, is it a 50-50 fight? No. Cambosis uh, is going to be a huge underdog for this fight. You know, you're looking 70, 30, 80, 20 in favor of Lopez. You know, Lopez has got the power. Lopez has got the um, size. You know, the, the size, yeah. You know, he doesn't have, the, I think George would have him in hand speed. But I, I can say that George is probably faster, but what we saw, not to interrupt you, but what we saw in the Loma fight is that Tiafimo can slow it down in box. He has a high, he has a high ring IQ. So, you know, we saw that if he can take his time, he can pick you apart. And I'm wondering, George Lopez is not elusive like the Matrix Lomachenko. How is he going to get away from those body shots? You know? Mm. If that's what TFM yeah. decides to do. George is going to have a whole lot going on in that ring. But I do also commend TFM Lopez for fighting his mandatory, especially since, you know, there's so much divide over his franchise championship status. Now, I've given up on it. I'm like, all right, if they say he's the motherfucking champion, He's the champion. If they're saying Devin Haney's a champion too, then he's the champion too. Even though I can't stand it, I'm like, whatever. But I do feel that if Lopez wins, just not to get off track a little bit, that him and Devin Haney got to fight. I'm sorry. You know, but then what's, the, what's happened with Loma? Um, but if this fight were to happen in Australia, I guess we got to talk about the logistics of it. Is that it would be really difficult because, correct me if I'm wrong, Jay, when you fly into australia you have to quarantine for two weeks right correct 
that because all the tennis players just come in for Australian Open have just got out of their two-week quarantines. So that's so, everybody. Yeah, we'll have, Bob Arum, no, ma no matter when you but, get there, two weeks, you got a quarantine. When, when, yep, when you get here, regardless of who you are, doesn't matter what country you come from, um, maybe New Zealanders can get here without quarantine period, but that changes on a daily basis. But, you know, if you're from another country, you go straight off the airport, straight into the hotel security, straight into the hotel, and you're stuck there for two weeks whether you like it or not. So, so logistically, it would be a nightmare because let's say for everybody who has to come over there, the team and everybody, the team members, the tech people, let's say if somebody has to come over there for a pre- a few people from top rank have to come over for a meeting before the actual fight. They got a quarantine for two weeks. You know, logistically, it would be a nightmare, you know. And then financially, will it be enough money for them to construct their own bubble over there with security and staffing and rent out the whole hotel or whatever facility? I, I, I put it this way. I guess I'm going to say I have little confidence that it would happen in Australia. And if they did it, my God, you know, it's like, wow, they actually did it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is doable. I mean, as I said, the, the tennis players, you know, from multiple countries. But that's tennis. Players, tennis bringing more players. money than one fight's going to bring in. True, true. That, 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 that is true. That is true. Um, yeah, but it, it can be done. But as you said, it is a logistical nightmare. And, you know, it's a lot easier for George and his team of how many, however they are, what, 10 people or so, to go over to the States than... Or a hundred people come over here. So, so I'm out of I'm out of the loop, you know. So you've been hearing some type of chatter, small little rumors or rumblings about New York being a possibility. Well, yeah, I've read an article uh, written by an ESPN bloke that uh, New York is a possibility, um, which I find really unusual considering that New York is what a COVID mecca. Why would they go to New York? Um, but it's been written as a possibility. I can't remember the gentleman's name that wrote the uh, article. Does the Cameron uh, Wolf ring a bell? Uh, let me have I'm going to look. No, I'm a, you go ahead. You keep, you keep talking. I'm going to look it up in the background. Yeah, just go to uh, Tiffany Lopez, Google it news, and it's an ESPN article. Uh, I can't you. remember the gentleman's name. Because uh, it was the first one, I re uh, first one I read. So I think he'd be more in the loop than others if he's working for ESPN. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I, I mean, if they do New York, because they also been talking about putting, yeah, Cameron Wolf. So let me read a little bit of article here. Let me pull it up for you. Um, Do a little reading rainbow. Zoom in here. So it was written February 3rd uh, by Cameron Wolf, ESPN staff writer. Let's see. Let's go down to Yeah, the I think that, that's the gentleman. Yeah, that's the block for sure. That's him. Lopez told ESPN There's his ideal there. plan for 2021 is fighting Haney at, at lightweight before moving up the junior welterweight division to face the winner of Jose Ramirez, Josh Taylor. Hold on, let me look what he says. Top rank, which manages Lopez negotiating with Camboso's team on a deal. There was early talks of this fight being in Camboso's homeland of Australia where there could be a larger crowd, but the intention now, according to sources, is about to take place in the U.S., Due to COVID restrictions and quarantine requirements in Australia, among other things, New York has been mentioned as as an yep. early location option. Interesting. Yeah, that, it, it, well, yeah, I mean, the spot on there about the restrictions in Australia, there's no but the maybe's about it. The Maloney twins had to spend two weeks in a hotel coming back from yeah. Vegas. So, yeah, they're, they're absolutely 100% correct about that. So, I yeah, would think um, because I would think New York because it would be, you know, easier, you know, it's closer to the airport. Um, they would be, they, you know, top rank has stroke in, in ESP and has stroke in New York. They'll be able to put up their own bubble situation, you know, but they do it at the garden or the Barclay center. We, that's what I'm thinking. We don't know. We don't know, huh. you know, um, and then, you know, Tiafimo being from Brooklyn. Also, they've been talking about having Ed, Edgar Berlanga fight out in New York. So maybe they know something that we don't know, you know, because Bob Beerham has openly been upset with the ways have been with the way things have been going with judging you know and more importantly the nevada state athletic commission you know over the course of when top rank started their bubble fights so he's been saying he went on the he went on the record to say uh i gotta get the fuck out of vegas something like that right yeah he was
was pretty pissed off in yeah. that Lonnie fight, yeah. And, and Bob Arum is not the type of guy that if he says he want to try to get out, he's not going to try. You dig me? You know, so yeah. I think that that's probably what they're doing. They're probably, you know, they're probably going to do... In fact, I don't think this fight coming up next week with Oscar Valdez. Let me look real quick. This is important. Let me just go right here, pull up the uh, boxing schedule. I don't think the fight with Oscar Valdez versus Miguel Burchelt is even in Vegas next week. Let me check real quick, February the 13th. No, it is in Vegas. Is that the is that the featherweight blocks? Uh, that Miguel that name? Wait, yes, one hundred and thirty pounds. It's a big fight. One hundred and thirty pounds. Oh, that's um, a super feather. One hundred and thirty. Yeah, yeah, one hundred. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a big fight for the WBC. Like one thirty is yeah. So okay, so yeah. I see, I, I see what's going on. Well, I mean, if they go to New York, I mean, good for them. Shit, I'll be, I'll drive my ass up there in quarantine. Yeah, you should have your ass up there in quarantine and get to that fight. Yeah, I good. would. I'll, I'll be up in there. Bloody, bloody earth. Yeah, bloody earth, because, you know, there's no way I'll be able to get the States. No freaking chance. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. Uh, um, well, until we get another update, I guess we can expect for an announcement to be made in the looming weeks, you know, because once again, it's the IBF, and as Tfimo said, they are strict. They don't fuck around, so they want a date on the books. I'm going to go ahead and say probably... It's not going to be March. We would have heard of... I'm going to say probably April is when, you know, is when... Now, I'm going to... I reckon, I reckon mid-May. You think it's going to be that late? I reckon mid-May. Uh, I don't think they're going to do... I don't think they're going to do mid-May because Top Rank already has Jose Ramirez versus um, uh, uh, Josh Taylor May the 8th. And that's supposed to be moving to another date because Canelo is supposed to be fighting. So... I'm thinking they're going to try to do this anytime before the end of April. Okay, I squeeze it in before the uh, canal. Yeah. Canal is fighting Billy Joe uh, Saunders, isn't he? Yep, the first weekend of May. Single de Mayo. Oh, so. well, they'll, prob they'll, they'll, probably, they'll probably do it before that because, yeah, they'll be, um, it won't affect anything going on in Australia because there'll be, there'll be nothing going on around there anyway, so it won't make a difference. So it'll be on a, probably on a Sunday morning here. So... Australia will be you know, jumping on the bandwagon. That, that that's easy. That's an easy view for Australia. No worries. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Closing well, thoughts. I'm, I'm extremely, ha I'm extremely happy that the fight's happening. Good on George. I mean, he thoroughly deserves it. Good on Lopez for you know mm -hmm. giving the giving George the opportunity. So, um, yeah. I mean, you know, it's all it's all tick tick tick, and let's have the boys put on a fantastic show. So we could uh, also. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish your thought. No, no, I'll just I'll just I'll say I'm not going to give a prediction. I'll just say that George is going to be a heavy underdog, and we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. So. And I'm going to say expect for. I was getting confused. Which one is fighting Franco in the rematch? That's Jason, right? Andrew. Andrew, Andrew. fight. Andrew. So I can say expect for Jason to probably be. Jason could probably probably be on the on the undercard. Nah, he's going to be on the card with his brother. Whatever happens there. So that's that was already on Australian media the other day. All right, so cool, the, cool, the cool, cool, twins cool. Might do, the Maloney twins will probably do their own thing. By the look of it, uh, Andrew's going to get his third fight with Franco in Australia, and Jason will be on that card. Gotcha. That's what's the plan for that? Well, then two. there you go. So, I will, as it stands right now, I have no, you know, we're going to have to wait and see what they do with this undercard. But this fight alone, especially with Tia Fimo's, uh status, is going to carry the card. But Top Rank is not really known for having two bad undercards. So, uh, yeah. please take your time out. Like the video. Doesn't take, you know, means the world to us to get us up in the uh, search engines. Follow me on Twitter at T Street for Life and Old Mate at Old Mate B on Twitter. Um, anything else you want to say before we go, Big J? Nah, just follow us on Twitter, guys. The more followers, the better. So I appreciate your support, guys. I appreciate your. You know, tune in to the videos and listen to some bogan dickhead from Australia talk boxing. Love these guys. Appreciate the support. All right, please subscribe.